Section 8 deals with acid chlorides, okay? And there's pretty much only one way you can make acid chlorides as presented in the textbook, and that's a pretty good reaction, fairly universal, okay? So if we have something like benzoic acid, if we treat this with thionyl chloride, we can make benzoyl chloride. From this reaction, we produce sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride, okay? So SOCl2 is called thionyl chloride. It's fairly reactive, reacting with the water from the air. Yeah, it's pretty, um, uh, pretty, pretty reactive chemical to handle. It's very corrosive. So let me show you uh, the mechanism, okay? So we don't worry too much about the SO2 and the HCl. We, of course, are uh, focusing mainly on um, this reaction here, which is the, uh, the, the main synthetic transformation, okay? Now let me show you what the mechanism looks like. So we've got a couple of different nucleophiles here. Now, in general, most of the time, you want to use the uh, carbonyl oxygen to do the attacking. It's a stronger nucleophile. And so let's draw out the thionyl chloride. So these are weird inorganic chemicals that you may not have seen before. Um, so we'll draw the Lewis structure with all the lone pairs there. And so what you want to do is, uh, in general, use your lone pairs. But anyways, we'll, uh, we'll take uh, lone pairs of this oxygen atom here and attack uh, the sulfur here, OK? Now it is possible for, well, this is the mechanism proposed in the Klein book, so I'll just We'll just write it out, okay? So first you have attack, all right? And we draw out what we have there. Add all these lone pairs in. Okay, and we have a doubly bonded guy here, okay? So, and a formal charge of positive, okay? So, okay, I forgot. I mentioned that I would tell you if these reactions are acidic or basic. I, I was under a faulty assumption that most students would recognize that this is under acidic conditions because you're producing hydro hydrogen chloride, okay? So what we have here um, is an acidic reaction condition. Recall again, we do not want to have any negatively charged oxygen atoms when we have acidic reaction conditions, okay? So all of these oxygen atoms, um, generally speaking, should be neutral or, um, or protonated. And you can see here how we're breaking this rule in the very first reaction mechanism, all right? So that's an O negative, all right? So we do have the positive here. Now, uh, what happens at this stage is that we are going to uh, kick off our leaving group, okay? So kick off the chloride. And that's why I like doing SN2 for the very first uh, reaction mechanism on the sulfur. Um, e either way, it would mess up uh, one of our two rules. So anyways, we have this kind of intermediate here, okay? Well, we're not quite there yet. Let me take chloride, and we'll use that as a best alternative to a basic thing we have. And so that's a deprotonation.
Okay, and I'm going to highlight here what our leaving group is. Sometimes we can get lost with all of the details, but basically what we're doing is we're converting uh, this guy here, which is a poor leaving group, into uh, this guy here, which is an excellent leaving group. Okay, why is that a good leaving group? Well, let's take chloride and let's do the nucleophilic acyl substitution. So remember, we can't do SN2. We've got to attack this. And go through this intermediate. Okay, so we have this uh, tetrahedral intermediate here, and um, Again, we have this negative charge on the oxygen. Okay, and uh, what we want to do now is to kick off the leaving group. So, this is going to collapse, and we're going to form through an elimination process. the acid chloride. So this is where you form the acid chloride. And we form this byproduct which um, <clears throat> I won't draw all the lone pairs in there, but that goes on to form sulfur dioxide and uh, chloride. So that's where the sulfur dioxide is produced. Um, in this step right here you form the hydrogen chloride. So it's a very weird mechanism. Um, this is mechanism 21.2. Okay. I personally don't require my students to memorize this reaction, but I just wanted to point out uh, what happens, okay? It's quite uh, lengthy. It's quite intricate. Okay, you, you first have um, attack of the carbonyl oxygen or the pi bond on the thionyl chloride. This intermediate collapses, then you have chloride deprotonating and then attacking, and finally you kick off um, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride are formed in the reaction, okay? So this is how it works. The main key point here is that you can grab any old carboxylic acid you want. <clears throat> you can treat this with <clears throat> thionyl chloride. <clears throat> and you form your acid chloride, okay? <clears throat> so that's the main reaction that you need to be um, aware of, okay? This reaction here. Now, hydrolysis of acid chlorides can be done. Okay, so we'll call this uh, reaction one. Acid chlorides can react with water. Uh, drew it out there so we can show the mechanism in a bit to give you um, acid chlorides. Acid chlorides react with water to give you the carboxylic acids back again. So if you're not careful when you make your acid chloride, it might get moisture into the flask from the air and slowly convert back to the carboxylic acid. So how does this reaction work? The acid chlorides are just so reactive, they break a lot of the rules. But you always have uh, this tetrahedral intermediate, okay? So water is going to directly attack. The chlorine there is just so electronegative, it's um, quite electron deficient, okay? Okay. 
you get the tetrahedral intermediate. And then what happens at this stage is that we have uh, chloride being expelled out, okay? Uh, you always want to uh, kick off the leaving group usually first before you do any acid-base manipulations. So here we're going to expel or eliminate the chloride, and we're going to form the uh, protonated carboxylic acid. Okay, so there's a extra proton here, so that's super acidic, and you have chloride floating around. Chloride is now going to deprotonate. And that's going to give you the carboxylic acid and hydrogen chloride. So it's AED for the curved arrow reaction mechanism. Okay. Now, fumes of hydrochloric acid normally uh, are produced. Um, it can corrode metal equipment in your fume hood and come into the ducting and so on of your building. And it can be quite... Um, noxious, right, to be breathing those things. So oftentimes we add pyridine to the reaction mixture to soak up any um, hydrochloric acid that's produced. Um, this is described on page, uh, yeah, in, in the client's textbook as well. So what we normally do is uh, if we have a carboxylic acid chloride, let's put, I don't know, um, you know, some interesting functional groups here. And if we treat this with water, we oftentimes add uh, pyridine on the bottom. PYR is pyridine. And that, remember, is a uh, six-membered hetero aromatic thing. Okay, so it can, uh, it's a base. All right, it's a base. And so this reaction is going to give you You know, the carboxylic acid, all right, that's all. We're not going to draw um, any, anything special here, but I do want to mention that um, no, it's auto-detecting, that's an ellipse, that's fine with me. So what is the pyridine doing? Well, when you have hydrochloric acid being produced, rather than it bubbling out of your reaction mixture and, and ruining your lab, pyridine at this point comes in and uh, absorbs it, okay? It soaks it up. It's like a sponge. And that gives you pyridinium chloride. All right, so it's a cleaner way, okay? You wouldn't want to know that there's a company down the street or uh, in your town that's producing tons of hydrogen chloride and just emitting that into the air. That would lead to acidic rain probably, right? So you'd want to know that they're using pyridine to you know, isolate this chemical and, and keep it in a waste container or something. All right, so that's the use of pyridine. You'll uh, you'll see you'll see that a lot, okay. Um, particularly when you do alcoholysis of uh, acid chlorides. Reaction number two. Alcohol lysis of acid chlorides. Please don't get confused by the pyridine. It's just in there as part of the reaction mixture. So if we've got um, an acid chloride, and we treat this with ethanol, and we'll add pyridine there. The pyridine, once again, is just to absorb any hydrochlor hydrogen chloride that's produced. What we're going to form here is an ester. Okay, so that's the ethyl ester, and um, you can see that this ethyl alcohol is ending up right here, okay? And of course, you're making hydrogen chloride. We don't worry about balancing these chemical reactions, but technically that's reacted with the pyridine, right? So how does this reaction work? Um, the reaction mechanism is, is very similar to what we had with uh, alcohols, okay? So in the first step, we're going to have 
Let me draw it in exactly the same orientation. In the first step, we're going to have ethanol be a nucleophile. Okay. So again, acid chlorides are so reactive, you don't need to protonate the carbonyl or anything like this for it to react. They just immediately react. Okay. So the ethanol is going to attack And, you know, we can add all these lone pairs in here to maintain the octet. And so we have that tetrahedral intermediate, remember? And now what we want to do is kick off the chloride, okay? Kick off the chloride. And then uh, here's where we want to use pyridine. Pyridine is the base. And you might make a note here for yourself. Wait, wait, why don't I use chloride? Pyridine is the base, right? Pyridine is more basic. Probably pyridine does the deprotonating here first, okay? so. We'll draw a curved arrow uh, coming from this nitrogen here to give me the ester product, okay? So that's uh, D for deprotonation. All right, so attack, eliminate, and then deprotonate. Uh, so those are the three steps for an alcohol reacting with an acid chloride. So keep in mind, um, many different kinds of acid chlorides could be used. Many different kinds of alcohols could be used. And so be uh, prepared to understand the, um, the patterns here, okay? So if I have an acid chloride that looks like this, and I add isopropyl alcohol in pyridine, what am I going to form? So you just need to pay attention to the branching and the number of carbons. So this is a secondary alcohol with three carbons, right? And we're going to hook that up to the carbonyl carbon and remove the chlorine and remove the hydrogen. So what you're going to form here is sketch out everything that's, that's there. Okay. Make sure you keep the right number of carbons and branching and all of that. And then here's where that oxygen atom is going to be. It's going to be right here, and then you want to sketch in those three carbons with the branching, okay? So we're, rem we're removing this chlorine, and we're removing this hydrogen, okay? So that's how you draw the reaction product. You might have these weird alcohols and acid chlorides that, that could be shown to you in problems, okay? So that's called the alcohol lysis of um, acid chlorides. I just call it esterification or ester formation, okay? Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, formation of amides. Amino lysis of acid chlorides. Okay. What does this look like? If you take um, an acid chloride, And you add um, excess ammonia. Okay. Um, XS stands for excess. Okay. That means more than two equivalents. Uh, what you'll form here is an amide. Okay. Um, you can also do this with uh, primary amines. So, for example, if
if I add two equivalents of um, methylamine to this, I will get the N-methyl amide, okay? Now, I just want to make a point here that we are using excess of the amine rather than using pyridine as a base because the amines are actually going to be basic, okay? So note. Use excess amines. And then, uh, which are which are basic, so we don't need pyridine, which is a base. Okay. So bases are nucleophiles. They gave you the amide, and then bases are also amines are also basic, so they can help soak up the hydrogen chloride that's formed. So this is with an amine. This is with a primary amine. Okay. And let's show the reaction with a secondary amine. So if we have a uh, acid chloride that looks like this, we can add two equivalents or excess of, um, let's use diethylamine. Okay, so let's use diethylamine. What we'll get there is a amide that has an ethyl group and another ethyl group on the nitrogen atom of the amide, okay? So those are uh, just sketching out some reactions of the amino lysis there. And um, the book doesn't seem to show the curved arrow reaction mechanism, but let me take a, the time to show you that, okay? So we'll do this first one. Any of these, any of these reactions are going to have the same mechanism, okay? So maybe I'll do the second one. All right, so let's show the curved arrow reaction mechanism for this process here. We're going to add excess methylamine to this, and we're going to form the amine, amide. Okay. So what we have first is an acid chloride, which is extremely, extremely reactive. So the um, methylamine has lone pairs on the nitrogen. That's our nucleophile. And that's going to attack the carbonyl carbon. And give you the tetrahedral intermediate. Let's go ahead and kick off our leaving group. So we've got the correct, um, you know, oxygen with alone pairs as the amide there. But we've got a problem with the nitrogen. The nitrogen has a formal charge of plus one. So here, do not use the chloride as the base. Use the amine, which is the base, okay? So I'll highlight that maybe in yellow here. Okay, so you wanna deprotonate. And what you form is your N-methyl, it's going to be a butenamide. I won't try to name this one. So it's AED, okay? It's AED. The reaction mechanism exact is exactly uh, the same, all right? So that's the amino lysis of acid chlorides, okay? 
So ammonia, primary means, secondary means, can all be used. Make sure you use two equivalents or write excess above your reaction arrow. Okay. Um, next up, we have um, reductions. Okay. Acid chlorides can react with lithium aluminum hydride. So remember that LAH is a source of hydride. Okay? So we could have an acid chloride. And if I treat this with lithium aluminum hydride, which is excess, Always assume lithium aluminum hydride is excess, but we're just, we're just emphasizing it that you have more than one, okay? And so what you form from this reaction is a primary alcohol. The mechanism is uh, quite straightforward, and it's a great thing to look at and also review. So the mechanism involves um, hydride attacking, Once again, you form that tetrahedral intermediate. So I'll draw the H in there. Um, chloride's going to leave. That's our leaving group. And you have an aldehyde. And remember, once again, that aldehydes can react with hydride. Now, we're not going to substitute anything. This is an addition reaction. So hydride adds, and you form the alkoxide. Okay, And it sits there and waits around for you to tidy up your notebook. Now, when you come back, and in step two, when you add water, a large excess of water, I might add. This is when it reacts to form the alcohol. Okay, So that's a protonation. We're protonating the alkoxide. So what do we have? We have AE, then AP. Okay, So AE is the new stuff. AP is the old stuff. All right, so the reduction of um, acid chlorides is straightforward. You always form the primary alcohol. Okay, it doesn't matter what, what you might have. If you have um, an interesting carbo uh, acid chloride, let's put the, uh, you know, an isopropyl here maybe. Interesting enough, okay? And if we add LAH, so just remember, it's always excess, all right? The book kind of makes a point of you writing excess, but I know and everybody knows that it's usually excess. All right, and what you're going to form here is a primary, you know, alcohol, okay? So that's all you need to know for uh, this kind of chemical reaction here. You just, it's a pretty simple thing. Um, but remember that hydride can react with the aldehyde, so that's why you form a, an alcohol, not a carboxylic acid. Now, you might wonder, well, can you use one equivalent? Is there a way to stop at the aldehyde? And people have figured uh, this already out, okay? They use a more fancy reagent that has only one hydride in its formula, okay? You see, lithium aluminum hydride, as we saw, has four hydrides, okay? And because of these multiple hydrides here, you're going to add an extra amount to your molecule that you're starting with. So what they've decided to use is a mono-reducing agent. Okay. It's lithium tri-tert-butoxy aluminum hydride. So 
That's a mouthful, but it looks like this. So there's three tert beetle groups here. And the development of this reagent took some time, but you know, basically we can just think of it as, okay, well it has only one H, so it adds only one time, okay? And uh, when this reaction is, is, is uh, written down, it, look, it has this form, okay? So this right here is going to be abbreviated like this in the book, okay? So there's, of course, a lithium ion floating around to counter um, the negative charge on the aluminum. So there's the lithium, there's the aluminum, and then we have three OR groups, okay? This, this is an OR group, this is an OR group, this is an OR group, and then at the very end is an H. So the easy way to remember that this is a mono-reducing agent is that there's just one hydrogen right here shown in the formula, okay? So as an example of this, if we had uh, that molecule I drew before, this guy right here, and we treated this with um, this guy. So instead of LAH and water, we're using this weird creature and water. What you do is you stop at the aldehyde. Okay. And on paper it works great, but I can tell you um, in practice results may vary. All right. So that right there is a, uh, another reaction that you'll need to learn. What are we on? Reaction number four. Okay. Um, green yards also react with acid chlorides. Okay, now let me show you what uh, the form looks like. So if we have a green yard, well, if we have an acid chloride like this, and then we add two equivalents of, um, I'll make it a different color here, R, MGX. Um, so I didn't mean to put a, a parenthesis there. So I'm, I'm adding two equivalents of this, okay? Or excess. That's step one. Step two is to add water. And what you get here is a uh, tertiary alcohol with uh, two additional carbon-carbon bonds being formed. Okay, so this is a carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. You really want to uh, pay attention to that. How does this reaction work? It works just like we saw with lithium aluminum hydride. We have a carbanion, okay? That could be a methyl anion, an ethyl, maybe a phenyl, whatever. Here I'm just going to draw R. So this can attack, okay? This gives you a uh, tetrahedral intermediate once again. Remember, R is a very bad leaving group. The only leaving group we have here is chloride. So that makes a uh, ketone. And I want to keep my, my, let my colors in here so you can see what's happening. So that makes a ketone. And we know from prior chapters that ketones react with green yards. So let's draw that second. Um, stage, okay? So here I have um, a green yard now attacking the carbonyl, okay? And here we have no leaving groups, so uh, the intermediate just hangs around there for us to tidy up our notebook. And we, of course, uh, add water after step two on step two and we protonate that alcohol, and that gives us the final products, okay? So that's AEAP, same exact thing we saw with uh, lithium aluminum hydride. Okay? 
All right, so that's what green yards do. Now you might be asking, well, lithium aluminum hydride adds extra amounts of hydride, and there was a way to figure out how to make only one hydride add to it. And here we have green yards that just add all of their R groups to our acid chlorides. Is there a way to only use one of them? And the answer is uh, yes. We use what's called a lithium dialkyl cuprate or a Gilman reagent. Okay. Now, because of the decreased, very decreased reactivity of the lithium dialkyl cuprates, they only add once, okay, or substitute the chloride in the acid chlorides. So a Gilman reagent is going to look like this. Okay, strange little thing, right? It's a metal bonded to a metal. Um, and then that can react with uh, acid chlorides to deliver only one R group. So what does that look like? Let's, let's give an example here. Um, if I have an acid chloride, okay, and then I add uh, R2CULI, that's how we draw that thing, okay? Uh, you're going to add only one R group to the final molecule and it stops at the ketone stage. Okay, don't worry about all the other stuff that's formed there, but uh, that's a pretty neat reaction, okay? So uh, let's discuss the summary now of, uh, so let's talk about all of the different reactions we've talked about in section eight. We've learned 10 reactions here, okay? So the key point here is that the acid chloride is very reactive, okay? It's right here. And we know we can kill it with water to form carboxylic acids. We can add alcohols to give esters. We can add ammonia, primary amines, or secondary amines to give amides, okay? We can reduce acid chlorides in two different ways. We can add lithium aluminum hydride, okay? Or lithium tritert-butoxy aluminum hydride, this crazy looking thing here, to give aldehydes. And we can add or make carbon-carbon bonds by adding organometallic reagents. If we use a Grignard reagent, we form a tertiary alcohol. If we add the Gilman reagent, we stop at the ketone. Once again, I highly recommend that you make flashcards, maybe of some simple things like this. Keep them in your back pocket, pocket and spend five minutes, you know, four or five or six times a day throughout the day, just thumbing through them and, and trying to memorize these reactions, okay? So uh, that's it for, well, let's do some practice problems now. So practice problem 21.18 asks us to remember some things, okay? so. Uh, many of these are just one-step reactions, so remember again that we have excess. So if you like, think through the mechanism. Hydride is going to replace the chlorine. That gives you an aldehyde, and then since we have excess, it's going to react further to give you an alcohol. And I'll just draw the two uh, hydrogens in there. Okay. So that those two hydrogens came from LAH. In reaction B, we're adding a phenyl magnesium green yard to that. So same thing. The first green yard is going to attack, kick off the chloride, and that gives you a ketone. And ketones react with green yards to give you alcohols. So we need to add two phenyl groups to this. One phenyl group will be here. I'll, I'll, I'll do that in green. Another phenyl group is here. I'll do that in green. It's completely acceptable to draw pH. You can also draw out the, the phenyl ring with the six carbons and the three double bonds. In molecule C, it looks like we have some more steps here going on. So what's happening with this reagent? Okay, if you look at the letters here, it has only one hydride. 
Okay, so it's going to make the aldehyde, and then what we do is we add ethyl magnesium bromide. So that's going to react with the aldehyde to give you an alcohol. All right. So after that's all said and done. You're going to make the aldehyde in step one. And then I hope you remember the aldehydes and ketones chapter. When you add ethyl magnesium bromide to this, followed by water workup, you form an alcohol with an additional ethyl group added to that carbonyl carbon. And here I'll just highlight where that ethyl group is. It's in green here, so two carbons attached to that carbonyl carbon. In molecule D, what do we have going on here? We have ethyl diethyl cuprate, right? So this is the Gilman reagent. We want to replace that chlorine with an ethyl group. All right, so that forms the uh, ketone with the ethyl group there, right? The ethyl ketone. And then what's going on here? Well, we add LAH and water. So remember from chapter um, uh, 20 that aldehydes and ketones react with lithium alonohydride to give you alcohols. So this is going to give you the alcohol here. And we're basically adding hydride. And um, at this point, I just want to mention that these are the same uh, molecules. So this right here in molecule, the product from C is the same as the product from D. You, you might look at those again now that you see that. In part E, we have an alcohol and we have an acid chloride. So we know this is going to make the ester. So phenol is a nucleophile. It just attacks like any other alcohol. In part F, we have a formation of an amide. So replace that chlorine for uh, the nitrogen. And then think about carefully what R groups are on that nitrogen. There's like a ring, right? So you want to keep that ring intact. It doesn't break apart or anything during this uh, reaction. Okay. Um, problem 19 and 20 are, are some good problems, and I'm sure there's other ones in the back of the uh, textbook as well. So uh, I'm pretty sure you've got a feel or a hang of things by now. So we'll stop, uh, we'll stop that here. Okay. So I hope you understand all the 10 reactions that acid chlorides can um, undergo or be involved in. Thanks for watching.